So we're waiting for the house lights to turn off? No, when it starts, we're waiting for John Brown to get out here. Okay. Well, I saw him for a second. I don't know where he's anymore.
Good evening. If you could find a seat, that'd be very helpful, please. It's great for you to be with us tonight. We're excited. I told Paul, uh, he said, could maybe we do this at your place? And I said, well, try to do it anywhere else. We really, <laughs> really want you to do this here. So my name is John Brown. I'm the senior pastor here. This is Wes Parker. He is our worship guy and 500 other hats that he wears here. And I just had a sense this morning to tell this little story and pray, and then Paul's going to come out. Uh, some time ago, not that long ago, I was buying some extra keys for the church and had to stand in line at this place, and this guy kept watching me. And I'm not all that much to look at, so I really couldn't figure out why he was watching me so much. And I get up there, and he makes the keys and stuff, and then he says, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, well, you're right, I don't. And he told me who he was, and he'd been in a youth group of mine like 25 years before. And I said, well, of course I didn't. You know, he'd, he'd gained 150 pounds and had a big beard. And, you know, <laughs> and, and I unfortunately looked almost exactly the same. And, and he looked at me, was, he wasn't gonna let me pay. I said, no, dude, I'm gonna pay you, and I did. And then he turned around and looked at me, a little tear coming down his cheek, and he said, you don't know how much good it does for me to know that you're still out there and there's people like you out there still doing it. And, and I said, oh, I start crying. <laughs> and the wonderful part tonight is it, gosh, so many people that are going to be on the stage tonight are just like that. They've been doing it a long time. It's all about Jesus. He's still wonderful. He's still powerful. His presence is everything that we want. And they're still doing it. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, tonight we open ourselves to you. We ask for you to touch us, thrill us, fill us with joy, fill us about. I mean, let us remember things in songs and concerts, but Lord, let us hear you in the present tense, and let us experience both your goodness and your greatness tonight, in Jesus' name. You know, I think I can express probably what a lot of you are saying here. I remember when I first heard Paul Clark's first album, and I remember being at 55th and Oak and, and uh, the Hallelujah Joy Band, yeah, yeah. Dennis Krauss was playing. He said, hey, this guy's got a new recording. You can get it, you know, tongue in cheek. Uh, what an impact. And here we are 50 years later. God is still moving, isn't he? I believe we're kind of redigging some kind of well tonight. It really feels like that. So I just want to tell you how we're going to start. There's this documentary being done by Isaac Alonji, and his team is here tonight with his video, videographers. And, and so... They're doing this uh, film about Paul's life, and it's called Tumbleweed in the Fence. So we're going to start this evening with part of that, part of that video from that series. Uh, everything was on fire, racism. My friend had been shot and killed, so you just feel like you're the next victim. So I was just at a point of despair that tried to take my life in the weight of the world on me. One day I was walking on campus down here and I saw a sign that said, peace with God through transcendental meditation. And I believe that I was completely under the influence of a demon. It comes through bowing to those false gods. From Lawrence, this is where we left for Berthoud Falls, the log cabin. That was really where the story gets traction. My heart is waiting, I am waiting. I was a desperate young man just trying to find peace. And I think desperation is a key ingredient into transformation. Like one day there wasn't Jesus music, and next day there was. Just, you didn't use your crutches, and I went. Come by faith, be not afraid. God must have healed my leg. For your ticket has been paid. Eight days in a row, I wrote a brand new song every morning. It truly was the Holy Spirit coming right into my heart and birthing uh, his calling in me. Yeah. Under a gray sky blue. My heart is waiting, waiting for you. My life changed this house. A man named Jesus Christ from Galilee. 
this was a whistling song. It's too dry up here. I have to confess, walking through the lobby, I felt like I was walking through my own funeral. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Haven't seen you for 40 years. Hey, you're shorter. <laughs> no. Anyway, this trailer that you just saw is um, something that uh, is humbling. Um, I'm going to keep my eyes closed for a minute if you don't mind. I'm afraid I'll see people. I'll be distracted. Um, I chose the title, Tumbleweed in the Fence, because my life has been like a tumbleweed. A lot of people don't realize when a tumbleweed breaks off, it actually becomes a pollinator. It rolls and rolls and rolls, and then eventually it gets stuck in a fence. It stays there until the wind comes along and lifts it over that obstacle. That season ends, and it rolls on to the next season. And I've had easily 10 seasons of five years. My life is strangely uh, separated into those segments. Jesus movement, 1970-75, for example. 2.0, 75 through 80. It just keeps on rolling. And there have been times I thought the tumble was stopping. I thought that was over on planet Earth. Somehow uh, I escaped. The Lord delivered me and healed me and put me back on my feet. For the times I made crummy decisions, affected people, the Lord picked me up, put me back on my feet. So tonight, as we celebrate these 50 years, 52 years ago last May, that Jesus came to that cabinet you saw in that trailer, and he changed my life. Not perfect by any means, but I'm his. It's going to be tough to get through tonight. But a joy. I gazed into a looking glass and what did I see? A face that looked somewhat like mine staring back at me. His voice was soft and easy and before he left he said I'd like to save your life before you're Dead. I begged him not to hurry, but he drifted out of sight. His face, it was replaced by bright and shining light. And then I saw the answer written plainly on the wall. Teach this to your friends before they fall. So if you all will come along, oh, and join me in this song, we can learn to teach our hearts to be free. Just come by faith, be not afraid, for your ticket has been paid. A man named Jesus Christ from Galilee. Can't uh, whistle tonight. <laughs> Too torn up. La la la. La 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 So if you all come along, oh, and join me in this song. 
We can learn to teach our hearts to be free. Just come by faith in our prayer, for your ticket has been paid. By a man named Jesus Christ from Galilee. By a man named Jesus Christ from Galilee. By a man named Jesus Christ from Galilee. Thank you so much, and thanks to my good old 1926 Martins, my partner.
All right. I'm going to just say right now that 50 years ago when I wrote those songs, uh, they were really important to me. And after I got more sophisticated as a musician, I somehow kicked those songs to the curb. And uh, last spring, we were driving to Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, actually, let me move right into that part of the evening. I'd like to introduce to you my wife, Heidi Van Hoof, wherever she is. Where is she? Heidi, where are you? There you are, right down there. Can't see. Heidi. My sweet wife, Heidi, we got married a year ago, June 18th, on our property down in Herman, Missouri. If you ever come into Herman, Missouri, get in touch with us. We bought an 1842 stone log house on a 14-acre spring-fed lake. And we are Hermanites now after spending my whole life in Kansas City. Heidi's from Holland. We saw the house. I saw the house online. It looks like Holly meets Daniel Boone. And uh, we, we made a decision to move there to learn to be married. And uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But I wanted to acknowledge her because she kind of started this ball rolling last spring. We were driving from Herman up to Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, when was that? When was it? Oh, the pastor of the church is here? Mark, are you here? Awesome. Drove down from Des Moines. So many people are here from far away. I'm blessed so much. But we were driving up there, and Heidi says, I'm going to post this on Facebook tonight. I said, it's too late, honey. You don't understand how to promote concerts. You had to do that a long time ago. She says, well, I'm going to post it because you never know. There might be one person that might want to come. I said, oh, yeah, whatever. Hey, help yourself, you know. Then she kind of turns it up a notch. She's Dutch. She has a way of kind of turning the heat up. And she says, why do you play all your new songs? Why don't you ever play your old songs? I was like, well, you know, I like to play the new stuff because that's where I'm at, you know, and I'm better now than those old songs, you know. And I know sooner said that, and the conviction of the Holy Spirit became the third person in the car <laughs> and uh, said, hey, dude, uh, remember your beginnings back when you were a drummer and you just started barely playing guitar and you did your first record? I was like, uh, yeah, okay, and... And then I started thinking, okay, I'm going to counterpunch her, her challenge. So we got the concert. First thing that happens, we pull in the parking lot. One person there, two and a half hours early. It's a guy that went on Facebook an hour earlier who lived, what, two blocks from here or some, a few blocks from that church. He said, I can't believe you're playing just a few blocks from my house. I told the Lord before I die, I want to see Love Song and I want to see Paul Clark. And now my bucket list is half full. And I was like, looked over at Heidi and went, okay, Thank, thanks, appreciate it. That was a good call. And then just to kind of, not spider, but just to kind of think, okay, I need to repent. I'm going to repent right in front of this crowd and say, you know what? Those songs, my first two albums, are 50 years old, and they're stinking powerful because they're Bible stories. And the Bible never goes out of, amen? And I, I, like a car dealer in Vegas, I peeled off 13 straight songs. that I had not played half those songs for over 40 years. And they, as I played them, the joy. Okay, sorry. The joy of the Lord overwhelmed me. I was, I was aghast. I couldn't believe what was happening. It's like I was getting born again, again. It was unbelievable because I realized without those songs, without those albums, I'm, I'm nothing. Everything was built on those foundations. All the people that have helped me along the way. We're going to see this, so much people tonight here. But I was so convicted when I was singing those songs that it brought me so much joy, I couldn't help but just say, okay, Lord, I'm going back to my roots. I'm going back to my first love. And that's why we're here tonight. I want to celebrate not 50 years of my records or anything. It's the faithfulness of God. You know, last night, 24 hours ago, I was in a hospital. I had a golf ball in the back of my head the last week. And it was getting bigger and bigger. And the doctor on Thursday night said, oh, I'm gonna, it might be cancerous. So I'm going to, you know, have to take a sample of that, blah, 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 blah. I said, no, I got a concert Saturday night. I want a big old bald spot in the back of my head. <laughs> got enough of that going on. So anyway, so, and then Thursday night, I couldn't sleep. It was like having an ice pick in my head. Every time I rolled over, I'd scream, wake Heidi up. She wasn't sleeping. Everyone's at Kegi's at her house. Fortunately, they slept through it. But um, finally yesterday, they all said, you got to go to the ER. It's this can't go any further. It could be an infection. By Monday, you might be really, really sick, and you can't take that risk. So we went to the hospital last night, and they cut it open, drained a bunch of stuff out of it, and here I am tonight. So I'm very thankful, you know, for everything. 
spiritual warfare to blessing to, I don't know if some songs oozed out. I might forget a lyric tonight. So someone might have oozed out yesterday. So I'll blame it on that. But um, so um, I'm just very grateful to have these songs under my belt and to have them uh, really being the wind in my sail this year. I've been playing them everywhere I go, and I'm just blessed every night, and I already see it happening. The Holy Spirit is just telling it. Before I go on, on your far left, Mr. UJ Payson on from Finland on fiddle. Hey, UJ. And to keep the J section going, we've got J Pfeiffer on keyboards. Now to the great part of the evening. I know you paid 20 bucks to get in here, okay? Some of you paid the, the fee to Eventbrite. If you want your money back, I will gladly, seriously, I will gladly refund anybody at Leisure Night saying, wow, that was a drag. That show is totally dead. I want my money back. I will pay you back, seriously. But here's the really cool thing about walking with Jesus. There's never a safety net more than his name. Truly, I'm serious. People try playing themselves through all the peace and security and insurance and all those events. And that's nothing wrong with planning like that. I'm not digging that down. But I'm telling you that you only have one safety net. That's Jesus. So I have spent 50-plus years in the ministry kind of not using a safety net except for Jesus. I've been very um, non-conventional, I guess you would say. Non-conventional father, non-conventional husband, non-conventional my ministry. Kind of always swimming upstream and going against the grade. And uh, so I thought, okay, for this 50th anniversary, we're going to celebrate with all my friends. And then I started thinking of all the great bass players I played with, Abraham Laborio, I mean, all the great drummers I played with, I thought, oh, okay, I'll call. And then, no, 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 that's not going to happen, says the Lord. He says, tonight on drums is going to be Mr. Brandon Estelle. Yeah. Woo! Who, I, who I'd done a couple festivals with when he was playing with Super Chick and some of those groups. And, but I hadn't seen, for, we have not seen her for I don't know, a long time, 15, 20 years, I don't know. And then over on bass, we have a guy that's not even 20 hardly, he's 22. This is, this is my friend Caleb. Give it up on Caleb McCallum on bass. Woo! 22 freaking years old. He was minus 30 when I did my first album. So, and we literally just rehearsed at 4.30, the songs you're here tonight, one time through in the green room, and then up here doing a sound check. And that's your getting. So if you don't like it tonight, I'm glad you pay your money back. But I'm telling you, these guys are fire plugs of joy. Because I'm not just about gathering a bunch of my old friends, which you're going to hear one of my old friends tonight, Paul Kagi. But I am all about paying it forward, investing in this next generation, and the, actually the next generation. You know, that, that clip you saw, off my trailer, I, I'm designing that with Isaac and Daniel Lesko, some of my friends. It's not the Paul Clark story of like, you know, then I did this, and here's me and Ringo, or here's Stan. It's not that. This is a manual I'm making so that some 18-year-old kid like I was with a broken compass that doesn't know the Lord, he's trying to figure out what a woman is or whatever, I want to aim this documentary right at a person who was like me 52 years ago. And when they get in and watch it, they go, dang, I'm going to do that. That's what I want to inspire. I want to inspire people to be soldiers in God's army. And let me just take a moment right now. I'm sorry I'm preaching. And you get your money back. And I'm not sorry I'm preaching because I, know, I, I couldn't make it through the lobby. I felt like I got my own funeral. I literally was like stopping every one foot and hugging the next person, the next person, the next person. Oh, hey, Ted and Debbie Stone. By the way, Ted and Debbie are here tonight. He did the album covers for Volume 1 and Volume 2. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> so awesome. I've known Debbie since first grade, 1957, so that's incredible. But um, tonight, I'm going to remind all you old-timers, and there's a lot of you here, I'm going to remind you that you are not done. Three years ago next week, I, I died, basically, in the hospital, you know, whatever you call it, code blue, anaphylaxis, all the words you can throw in, uh, and I survived the first one, and then 30 minutes later, the second one, but... The Lord has his hand on me. I, I pulled out of it, and it's taken me three years to get to stand here tonight. A year ago, I couldn't have done this. I couldn't walk up the hill of our property and back down. It was, it's been a challenge the last three years, getting my strength back, my health back. But I'm so grateful to be standing here as a witness. But I'm charging you, exhorting you in the joy of the Lord. And listen to me closely. You are not done. We are in a time zone right now 
that this is what I've trained for for 52 years. This is what we train for. We've got an opportunity with a world that's gone screwy. And it reminds me of 1969, 1968, 69. We've got an opportunity because you know what? People are hungry again now. They're tired of being fearful. They're tired of being beat down and all that stuff. And we have an opportunity as, as Christians to actually share our faith with real gusto. So do not think that you're done because you're not hip with a tattoo and 25 years old that can play worship at a local church. No, you are useful. And if you are 25 here tonight, play your instrument as hard as you can and witness for Jesus as hard as you can. Most of all, first love is the key. Like it happened to me in that car on the way to Iowa that day. Fall in love with Jesus again if you need to. Repent of your hardness of heart or your just static Christian life if you need to. Whatever it takes, do that because you'll never regret it. My father was an attorney for Shukardi Bacon. He grew me to be an attorney. I, I wanted to be a sports, you know, like a three-star athlete. I love baseball, all that stuff. But he took me to not only Kansas City A's games in 1955 forward, and then Chiefs games when they came in the 64 or whatever, but he took me to the courtroom from time to time because he was grooming me to be a defense attorney. And I'll never forget, when I was about 12 years old, he told me the first lesson in law, son, is to train your witness to stick to the story. The plaintiff will try to throw curveballs in the dirt, fastballs on your chin, and try to get you off your game. And your client will try to just mush them up. And we have that same opponent. We have an accuser of the brethren that wants to throw curveballs in the dirt and fastballs on your chin and cause you to stumble, fall down. Oh, look, you said God will never use you again. In fact, he doesn't even love you anymore. Those are the lies of the father of lies. And that is deception. What's the first thing Jesus told his disciples? Take heed that no man deceive you. Beware. If there's anything in the last couple of years applies to it, it's that beware, children, of what you hear and see. children of what you hear and see. Many will come saying that they are me, performing signs and wonders to deceive. Even you that in Christ Jesus believe. prophets would arise fooling many covering up their eyes you will know them by the fruits they yield see the harvest being prepared in the And many go, many think they know the road to eternity. Just keep your faith in Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Many come and many go, many think they know the road to eternity. Keep your faith in Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
Spirit tells us that in the latter days some will depart from Jesus and go astray, giving heed to doctrines full of lies, turning from love and teaching us to despise. children of what you hear and see. Amen. 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 Now comes my first apology of the night. I forgot to capo up. That song is supposed to be an E minor. And these guys just realized that I screwed up and played it in D minor, and that's how fast they caught on. <laughs> Amazing. It's like hand somebody a book and starting to read another book. So I'm very thankful for that. Hey, so as we move on through this evening, it's going to be fun to bring up people, but this next song, uh, this is a tune. I was influenced definitely by uh, Beatles, Travis Wilson, Nash, Cat Stevens, Joni Mitchell, and I could go on and on and on. But one of the people that I kind of seemed to attach myself to was a guy named Neil Young. And I kind of looked like him back then. My hair was long and parted in the middle when I played a Martin D41. And uh, sing the needle and the damage done. You know, I had it all down, man. There's, there might be a picture of me, actually, if uh, John's got that picture of me with a hat on by the campfire with a piece of straw in my mouth. I don't know if John's got that or not, but uh, that was my total old man look at my life, yeah. <laughs> okay, whatever. So, but this song was a song called Don't Judge Your Brother By His Face. Hello, 52 years old, and what to do, it fits right into the narrative that we're experiencing today, so. Amen.
by his face Don't judge your brother by his face Don't judge your brother by his face Thanks guys They'll be back in a minute All right The next step we got a really fun thing that's going to happen so um, I'm going to talk about my best friend who's not here with us in body, but he's here in spirit, and uh, that's my friend Bill Spear. Uh, Bill was like my Garfunkel. He's my right-hand man. We became Beatle maniacs together in seventh grade. We were Beatle dudes. Started a band called The Commotions, and uh, with Bob Morris and other players in town. Here's Stu Langer. You know, certain people that came and went to that band. It's Commotions with a K, by the way commotions, and we would ride our Stingray bicycles through Ranch Mart Shoppers here on 93 Fifth Mission Road, pretty like all the girls were chasing us, being the Beatles, and uh, Pinky, there you go, somebody here has got Pinky down, oh, get it, oh, there it is, yeah, there's, you can, you can reach me at that number still, DuPont 10844, not, uh, yeah, Bill Spear, me, Bob Moore, Stu Langer, Skip Johnson, I wish Skip was here tonight. His dad had all the 8mm videos of all the parties we played at. No sound, thankfully, no sound. They're probably terrible. But, uh, yeah, there's Bill on the right, Bill Spears, me playing drums. I was a drummer for six years, from 12 to 18 years of age. And if you look on the wall there real quick, you'll see the Beatles. So there's 64. So I mean, the Beatles just broke. I had, you know, Dave Clark Five, the Animals, Peter and Gordon. I mean, great music that year. But uh, Bill and I moved forward. I don't know if you get any more pictures there. We have Bill before I move on. Yeah, there's... Part two, 65. I, I decided I wanted to be James Brown. I didn't want to be a drummer back there in the back anymore, so I was the lead singer up front, and we were playing soul songs. That's Bill playing guitar still, and Bob Morris, Skip Johnson, Fred Sister on drums. And then I kept playing drums, but I realized I wasn't going to be James Brown. I wasn't that good. Just wasn't going to happen, Brown. <laughs> so there I'm playing my little uh, Ludwig kit with the commotions on it. You know, play at school. I don't know what we got next coming up there. Uh, there's Bill and I at the Grand Canyon. Funny story. One of the guys in the band who had a car, the only one that had a car at that time, left to go back to Kansas City. He said, whatever you guys do, we were living in this cabin in Colorado. Whatever you do, do not take my van anywhere. It's not yours. It's my van. I'm going back home to Kansas City. I'll be back in a week. See you later, Fred. Thanks for coming. An hour later, Bill and I were in a car, drove down to the Grand Canyon, <laughs> camped in the north and south rim both, and uh, hold the next picture there if we got another one. Yeah, there's... Uh, Sharon in the middle, he's gone with the Lord, and that's Bill who's also gone with the Lord. So it's, it's humbling to look at these pictures. And that was in uh, May of 1970, back at the cabin again. Uh, next picture, there's Rocky Mountain Gorge. That man on the far right is my father out there celebrating his 50th birthday. He and my parents were separated at the time, and it honored me that he came out to celebrate his 50th birthday with me, and he was a hippie for a week. It was great. High-powered lawyer from Shikardi Bacon. I think there's a picture, actually, of my dad and I, maybe, if you have it, John, up on Berkeley Pass. Oh, here, here we go. The guy I'm going to bring out in a minute is in the middle. That's Mike Burr with all the uh, uh, hair going out sideways. And that's me, the next to the right, and that's Bill on the far right. And that was in Denver in 71. Uh, we moved there. You got another picture of him? We're about done or not? Here we go. We're moving around. I worked at the Playboy Club for seven months, saved up my money, and bought that 56 Dodge pickup truck for $200. Uh, from a guy in Raytown, and I built a camper on the back, and Bill and I took off uh, with that camper for Alaska. Now, I know that you kids today think you got it really tough. You only got one bar on your phone, you're going to anxiety attack, and you know you can't get Netflix for like two hour delay at your condo or something. But imagine the anxiety of my mom and dad. I'm 18 years old, not even 18 yet, I'm 17 and a half. I'm going to Alaska, mom, dad. What? Yeah, yeah, Bill and I are leaving for Alaska with our two dogs. And we'll, th we'll see it then in the summer. I mean, there's not a lot of parents that probably be able to really handle that today, but off we went. We got all the way up halfway up the Alaskan Highway. Here we are, yeah. On the way, we got about actually two thirds of it, the, the uh, Canadian Highway to Alaska. We ran out of money and tires. <laughs> and I had to actually, and we, we got hit by a car too. That's a, the black dog, she got a broken leg. But so Bill and I, you can tell the Bill and I are packing on the pounds on that trip, really. 
eating like kings. Uh, I weighed 108 and Bill weighed 113. So we were, uh, we were not really healthy people, but we were, we were determined to make it to Alaska. I was going to become a forest ranger. That was my goal there, was to become a forest ranger and save all the hippies in Alaska. And uh, so that didn't work out. I had to wire my dad, and, and he, I think he sent me, if I remember right, I think he sent me $200 enough to buy a set of tires and then enough gas money to make it back. Because gas was expensive back then. I mean, shoot, I mean, it's 17 cents a gallon. So <laughs> I think we spent $57 for the whole trip on gas. I kept a little lodge. So moving forward, that's Rocky Mountain Gold versus me on the right, Bill on the far left, Fred Berry in the middle, who's also not on the earth anymore. R.G. DeCunha, who can't be here tonight, he was the original drummer, and thankfully Brandon fell in, and Greg Whitfield, who's still with us. But uh, that was the band Rocky Mountain Gold Rush. You can see my Neil Young best uh, plaid shirt and my Martin D28 with my, with my Neil Young voice singing, you know, we praise the Lord. So what else we got, John? Anything else before we move on? Yeah, same band. Yeah, playing. We were, we were like Americana music, basically, playing country rock music. I mean, it was really big. Richie Furet, actually who became a Christian a few years after this, uh, lived near us. And uh, we were basically we were in love with Poco and the birds. We heard the rodeo and stuff. So we were writing country rock songs, and uh, that was really great. What else we got? There we go. Just another picture. Hamming it up. A bunch of 18-year-old kids thinking we're going to be the next Beatles. Didn't work out that way. But uh, got any more, John? Oh, this is a little faster. Oh, here we go. There's a fellow coming out in a few minutes. You might recognize on the far left. That's not a munchkin. That's actually, uh, that was taken at the table in 1974, April 74, when we were recording the album Come to His Presence. And if I remember right, Jay Trix and I had a beard growing contest. Now, there's a lot of people that have gifts in life and things that, you know, they do well and they work hard and they get better and better and better. But I don't know of any skill to growing a beard and how you actually make one grow faster. But Jay was ahead, as you can see. He was kind of jealous, a little bit of competition, me trying to outgrow Jay's beard, and Phil's catching up with us for sure, or passing me, I don't know. But that was a, that was a great season of life. Anything more before I move on? That's good enough. Anyway, so I'm going to bring out my friend. Hey, yeah, great memories. This is like a... Think of your $20 as being going to spend the evening with your uncle, and he shows you all the slideshows of all his vacation through the years, you know? <laughs> And here we are in my pickup truck, and uh, we stopped and pulled over there, and, uh, you know, I, I peed over there, that bush is over there, and you, you know, you're just having to go along with it, you know. So anytime you need to feel you need to leave, you no know, no hard feelings. But uh, if Mike Burhardt's handy, Mike, come on out here and be my sole partner. Yes, Michael Burhart. <laughs> Woo! His nickname is Berf. That's his nickname forever. I've known Mike since seventh grade, 1960. Ninth no, grade. eighth, ninth grade, yeah. 1965. Then, 60, yeah, 60, 66. Yeah, 66. Anyway, Mike played lead guitar on Volume One and Volume Two, the one the songs we're playing here tonight. And uh, I should have given a lot more time to prep, but he basically said, "There's no way I'm playing lead guitar on those songs when Phil Kagey's standing a few feet, few feet away." <laughs> So we were content to do this because this is really back to Americana. Uh -huh, we're going to yeah. do old school style like the Everly Brothers and share a mic. And this is a song that I hope I even remember because we rehearsed it an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I played it 50 years ago. So. Huh? You played it what? 50 years ago. Oh, yeah. How long was that? Uh, I don't want to remember that. Okay, I should. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, this guy... Uh, I've never seen anybody that burns it at both ends, uh, but th this is the one, and uh, <laughs> I, I can't keep up with the guy. I thought maybe two years ago uh, he'd slowed down for good, uh, for but uh, he rebounded, and <laughs> I'm going, darn. <laughs> well, we plan on moving down to Branson by Susie and Mike and, and even building houses next door to each other and kind of living out our lives together, but... Got a different plan, but uh, anyway, this is an old song called Sacred Cowboy that I wrote on the front porch of that uh, cabin we saw. I wrote like eight songs, eight days in a row. I knew like four chords, so it didn't take very long, but it's pretty amazing. <laughs>
His word was told, so pure like gold. But most folks, they just laughed and turned him down. He healed the sick and fed the poor. Where whiskey could not cure an ill. Then day grew dark, here's what he said, before they hung his head up on Boot Hill. Let us live in brotherhood, and only dwell on things of good. Mike was a member of a band called the Hallelujah Joy Band. We had a school bus, and uh, we drove all over the Midwest uh, playing for Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets of food, and then whatever money got filled in after the concert, they would uh, put in our gas tank, and we would move on and try to get home. Sometimes we didn't make it, but we eventually got home. So thank you, Mike, so much. That was really a blast. I mean, oh, my gosh. Friends like that are irreplaceable, and so many of you are those kind of friends here tonight. I literally was just kind of carved through the hallway there, and it was hard to hug, you know, people that, like Mark and Maria Springer. Maria was the first person who really worked in our coffee house. Uh, I know they're here from Colorado. They drove all the way from Colorado, and we're leaving to drive back to Herman. I didn't get to hang out with them for a couple of days. So there's people here from Buffalo, New York. In fact, let me just thank the sound crew over there. John, Peter Christian, who just stepped in for nothing. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, and then my friend, Stan LaTarte, he's up there mixing as well. He flew in from Buffalo. and He bought a ticket <laughs> to come to the show. And I said, hey, as long as you're here, could you do the feed into a, a live concert? So that was, that was quite something for Stan to come down. So, and, of course, he was mentioned earlier, but I want to give a plug for a second before we move forward. I'm going to put a picture of a movie, upcoming movie that's coming out, because there's a young man here in this audience with all these cameras and booms and stuff named Mr. Isaac Alonji. Where are you? There you are, over there. Isaac is an unbelievable, over-the-top, talented photographer that gave it up because he wanted to start making movies. I've been in, I don't know, two or three or four of his movies, Hallmark movies, uh, but what's really cool, he, Sandra, where is she? Is she here? Sandra, where are you? Oh, there you are. Sandra, stand up. You're important. I want to thank Sandra and Isaac for coming tonight. Not only coming, but Isaac has agreed to come out here and film this thing uh, we're doing here. And uh, But they have, I, Sandra's an amazing writer. They've got several Christmas movies. They used my house for one a couple of years ago. And uh, they have a movie coming out. Do we have that icon? There it is. This, this is a fantastic musical, actually. The Christmas, again, it's filmed a lot of it in Franklin, uh, Tennessee. It is great dancing. It's a great script that Sandra wrote, and I really want to encourage you. That's going to be coming out November 29th in theaters around. 
I'm serious, I'm going to say it twice now. Get online and support this. Even if it's not your favorite movie of all time or your favorite movie of all time, we've got to start supporting all these things that preach the gospel and good news. Amen? We can't let all this fake news and all this garbage stuff overrule us. So I, I just applaud Sandra and Isaac so much. They just, in faith, they just move forward, trying to figure out a way to preach the gospel and reach families uh, with the gospel of Christ and what better way through Christmas. So it's really, it's actually very good. I've enjoyed it. So um, thank you, Isaac, so much for all you do. That guy is, I owe him, like, we're, we're way out of scales on paying each other back. But it's amazing. So now we come to a part of the evening that's going to be controversial for some. I'd like to see if any of my family members are here. Is Joanna and Tate here? Did they make it? I don't know if they made it in time. Is she here? I can't see anybody. Back there. Joanna, can you stand up? Are you guys there? Where are you? There she is, standing up. And is that Tate? I can't see anybody. The house is too low. I see some people back there. Is that Jeremy? I can't see. Joel, yeah, Joel, okay, yeah, Joel and my two grandkids. Hey, guys, that's Lydia and Ridley, and then Joanna. Is that Jeremy back there? I can't see. Yes, hey, Jeremy, thank you so much for coming. Is Tate here? There you are. Tate came in from Santa Barbara for the holidays. He's a cool kid, and he's a hippie. He got the DNA, came through him. And then uh, is Oliver here and Alexa? Okay. All right, I know it's late for a three-year-old to stay out. And he's not going to remember this anyway. But I uh, just want to identify them. And my daughter, Jessica, is in Los Angeles. Her husband, Jordan, two beautiful granddaughters out there, uh, Isla Wren and Marla Sage. They obviously couldn't be here, but uh, it's a joy to have them here. But this is a little bit of a challenge, per perhaps, for them. And for me, I know it is. Uh, the wife of my youth, Sharon Clark, that many of you out there knew, uh, went to be with the Lord at the end of January this year. And uh, we were married for 30 years. We lived 10 houses apart from 1958. We had um, two different lives growing up, although we lived close together. They were a real good family, lived around the corner, and we were not a so good family. They lived around the other corner and had a lot of uh, things going on in our lives all the time. There were lots of action. And, uh, but when I came to Christ in that cabin, the first person that the Lord used me for to share my faith with and sort of, I guess you say, bring to a faith was Sharon Golly, who became my wife uh, shortly, a year, year and a half after that later. And uh, I got a few pictures I want to show. It may be tough. And the reason I'm bringing this up is twofold. One, I want to honor Sharon tonight, even though I'm married to, to Heidi now. And uh, I was single for almost 20 years between Sharon and I getting divorced and, and marrying Heidi last year. It's a long time, but I'm just going to go on record right now if I even take one more step that I was married to a ministry until, until my heart thing, until COVID. I couldn't see it. And there's nothing totally wrong with that because I've been sold out for Jesus, but I, I was out of balance. I neglected my, neglected my family sometimes, and I should have not been just continuing to road hogging it hundreds of nights a year. And, and uh, so I'm not confessing that to you tonight to gain any points, but uh, they live many nights without a father coming home. He was gone for weeks and months at a time uh, for the cause of the Christ, for the, for the cause of the gospel, right or wrong. You can judge me, I don't care. But um, tonight, I just want to make it clear that I want to honor Sharon for what she did for me and for our family. And I miss her. I love Heidi. I miss Sharon. She was a great woman. She had her own demons and tough battles. But she's secure in the arms of Jesus now. And uh, the reason I'm bringing this up tonight, I wasn't even going to do this until just two days ago, because I realized, I looked online, and some of you were buying tickets, I thought, oh, I sang Les Clown all together at their wedding. Oh, I sang Les at their, oh, I started seeing, I thought, holy smokes. You know, I wrote a lot of wedding songs in the 70s and 80s that were Kelly Willard and I, and, but the first one was uh, Let Us Clown All Together, that Sharon sang the duet with me at the end of that in the studio in 1972. And, uh, so I wanted to do this song to honor her, but also to honor all the couples that got married to, and I know you're here. So if you're out there, squeeze your honey's hand a little bit tighter, look at each other, renew your vows even. I've, in times in the past, I've brought couples up on stage and have faced each other while I've you know, sung these wedding songs. But. So thanks be to God for Sharon Clark. Thanks be to God for every couple that got married 
Let me just tell you one last scripture. Hebrews 9, 16 says, For where there's a making of a covenant, it's of necessity that one who makes it remains dead to himself. And that is a commandment. That's not an option. You doubt yourself, you'll be a lot happier. I have waited such a long, long time for this day to come. And all I have to give is the love from God's only Son He gave to me to give unto you. I pray that God will be with us night and day, guide us all the way in our life. There will be no strife with Jesus Christ and His kingdom which has come and made it possible for you and I to be one. I will make a queen of my home under the glory of the King. We'll raise our family in a castle full of love and trust the Lord in everything. Let us sing to the King. Hallelujah. Times when trial things are hard to see. Stand by me. With love, it can heal the pain. So let it rain on the roof of my soul. There is no hope. There's no hope that love can't fill. So let us climb, let us climb, let us climb the hill together. Let's climb, let's climb the hill together. Let's climb. Thank you for your patience on that. You know you got a different guitar for me? You can unplug this for a second. So to go from that to this next song is quite a leap. Hey, by the way, this is Neil Anderson, great musician and my roadie for tonight. So, obviously, the goal of this concert was to mainly do songs off of Volume 1 and Volume 2. But when I thought of that, doing this song, Let Us Climb Hill Together, it sort of took me into a new zone because I wanted to not just play forward songs, but there's a Greek word that's always inspired me. It's got bubbles in it, sorry. I traveled for several years with a Bible teacher named Derek Prince. I was his youthful co-worker, and I learned so much of the Word of God from him. I'm internally indebted to him for the things he invested in me. And I'm going to cover that in this next chapter we're kind of starting right now of the evening, is that uh, I'm very, very thankful 
for the people that invested in me. But one of the things I wanted to do was play this song, To Tell Us Die. I learned it from Derek way back in the 70s. It's when Jesus spoke the words, it is finished. Man, three intense words. They cover so much. The Greek word is to tell us die, like a die in your eyes. Okay, you like to say. But this this song was off of an album I did called Approach in Jerusalem that really Jay Pfeiffer and I did 90% of it together. It's a, if you go online and want to ever buy it, it's a great headphone album. You start, it's 40 minutes, just eight songs sewn, stitched and sewn together from Matthew 20 to Acts chapter 2. It's a skipping stone of the gospel. The fifth song on the record was this, this song called To Tell Us Die. And it was with uh, Peju Ustashi, who was the music director and uh, uh, woodwind player for The Passion of the Christ. He's played with the Ani. And he's, his list is so long in Hollywood, it's ridiculous. And uh, players from the LA Symphony and stuff, and, and Jay, and Don Harris, and Kevin Rogers, Phil Kagi played on it. A bunch of people played on it, but it really was an album that passed in me and through me. And whenever I put it on, I go, I wrote that? I wrote it. It's, it's amazing. It's a gift. And I know that you can probably identify with your own template of your own life, that you look back and you go, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I did that. And this song, I just thought, I didn't want to end this night without having this be part of the piece, even though it's not a 1972 song. It's like a 2002 song. But it is finished is the very heart of the gospel. And the reason we're gathered here tonight is to present the gospel. And it is finished. It is finished to tell us to a pinch more guitar in the mantra, please. What a great job you guys are doing. Prepaid by the enemy's deal for the potter's field. I was silent and drunk in a hurry to a midnight trial where the judge and the jury all scream. He blasphemed. Hear them cry, crucify him. I was spat on and mocked by their words of scorn. Wooden bats cracked my skull, then my head was adorned with a crown of thorns. I was scourged, I was bruised, I was beaten, and now they've nailed both my hands and my feet to this cross. Here on Golgotha Hear them cry Crucify him Hear them cry Crucify him Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Oh. 
Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Just finished. Thank you, Jesus, for finishing your work on the cross. A perfect, complete work. Amen. Come on, give them a lecture. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. It is finished. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're going to move forward now. I'm going to use my little notes here. Uh, did that, did that, did that. All right. Now we're ready to my friend. That I've never met before to come up on the stage. Uh, is Dennis Hells here? Is he around here? Sitting in mission? Or we got where are you? Come on up here. All right, never met you, but I'm glad you're here. There you are. Look out. I like this <laughs> so way back, really in the sixties, before I was even a Christian, my father, I told you he was attorney for Shook Hardy Bacon. He uh, got involved with the City Union Mission, doing some legal work for him, and then became a donor. He became really impassioned about it. And at Christmas time, we used to go down, you know, take the token food and clothing and stuff down. And um, I always believed in their work. And you drive around today, especially, you see these homeless camps on the side of I-20. I saw it coming in town, and it's like, wow, you know. 
And uh, it's easy to raise money or do this, and, but the people doing the real dirty work, the hard stuff of really making sure people are housed this time of year when it's cold and clothed and fed are people like Dennis and, and all the people at Oregon City and Mission. There's thousands of them across the country. And um, when I was thinking about this concert, uh, I just I didn't want it to be about me. Okay, we're obviously it's 50 years of me, but I just tried to think of anything I could that would just keep pushing it forward and uh, paint it forward, you want to call it. And I thought of City Union Mission, and uh, so I bought a couple of Martin guitars. They're not at fifty thousand dollar collector items like I'm playing here tonight, but they're two nice little guitars, and we're gonna give them away and not give them away, but we're gonna put them up for auction. Uh, Phil and I are gonna play them in just a few minutes here. And then you're going to have a link to go to. We're going to have to put that on Facebook later. We don't have it tonight. Uh, we thought about auction up tonight, but we thought, just a second, there's a lot of people that aren't able to watch live right now. They don't know what's going on. And I want to raise as much money as I can for Sydney Union Mission, not just bless two people with in the crowd tonight to put a wall hanger on the guitar with Phil's signature and my signature and us taking the, the pose. I want to raise as much as I can. I hope there's somebody out there that's going to give some ludicrous amount that they, God bless them with this year, and they're getting ready to make a donation to some charity. And they go, hey, just a second. I can donate X, Y dollars to Sydney Union Mission and get that Paul Clark, Phil Kagey signed, Summers, Mark Guitar. So, D Dennis, just tell us a little bit about Sydney Union Mission, what you're doing right now. Thank you very much. Uh, there we go. Thank you for letting me be part of the evening, and thank you, Paul, for inviting us to be here. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know, I could take two hours and just tell you about all the God moments that happen at City Union Mission that I've seen in 11 years. But I can tell you, since September of 1924, the City Union Mission has been God's ministry. The staff, the volunteers, and all of you that support the mission get to walk through life with people that need help. Those that come through our doors that may be in some really hard struggles in life, lost loved ones, lost their jobs, have addiction issues, could have some disabilities, um, and we're there to help them. That's what we do. And we couldn't do it without your support and your prayers, mostly. But I'll tell you, every two and a half dollars provides a meal at the City Union Mission. We served over 176,000 meals last Woo. year. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And over $21 provides, per, uh, provides um, housing for somebody for one night. We provided 84,000 soft pillows and warm beds. Wow. And most of all, there were 312 professions of faith last year. Yeah. Been telling me that. So thank you very much. Do me a favor. Hold that for a second. Okay, I'll hold it. Look up there and hold it to you. Do the little banana. Now, we're going to be playing. You're playing with me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's two guitars up here, and uh, that's a problem. I can't play two guitars at one time. I, I've tried before, but it never did work out. So, um, at this point, you know, I'm going to just do a random search of the audience. And find somebody to play with me. Any guitar players here tonight? <laughs> Raise your hands. Are there any? I see. Uh, there's one. Okay. See. Is there any? Me. me is uh. Oh, he, you, young fella, you little. Yeah, you. Yeah, you little guy. Oh, you got nine fingers only. Can you play guitar with nine fingers? I'm not sure. Hey, let's welcome this young man with nine fingers up here, on the stage, and. Uh, What's your, what's your name, son? Kilfeggy. Okay, yes. Okay, I, I think I caught that name. Fern McSnerd, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give a real round of applause to Phil Keggy. <laughs> Woo! All right. Two cheers for Paul and Phil. We're sitting down like the old days. Now we're sitting down because we're old. Oh, Ooh. let's see. 
Let's, let's, let's check the tuning. They're, these are brand new guitars. And if you if you win the bidding, you get the sticker too. The the, the, the tails tickets, they're amazing. So, hey, you know what? That sounds fantastic. Do a little bit more, will you? Oh yeah, I see. I see what you're, I see what you're doing now. Hold on here. I, I got. That's it. You play that last part you, again. You've got it. No, I, I think your guitar is better. Let me let me try that one. Okay. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay. Do play something. Oh yeah. Okay. I think we'll better switch again. This one's, this one's a lot better. I like this one. Just sends me. Okay, a little humor. We are stuck and constantly in humor and punville. The Kiggies got to our house Thursday, and the pun puns began. And there's been maybe four or five thousand of them since then. <laughs> we we uh, we're, we're actually rehearsing these with these guitars yesterday, and I said, boy, these are decent. These are nice. They're making good guitars now with Plex machines. They can set them up good, and they're not the greatest pickups or the best ones. The sides and back of these guitars are actually plastic. So if you're thinking about buying for your grandson for the future, great guitar to have fall off the couch and not break. <laughs> so we tried to think of what song would work for this. So we thought, well, something we can bang on like teenagers. Yeah. So we thought of a song off of the album Good to Be Home Yeah. called Holding On To You. Caught in despair You pick me up To show me that you care You give me Comfort and Kindness too I feel much better When I'm holding on to you Oh How I love you You satisfy My needs in every way Oh How I want you Beside me day by day When I'm frustrated And feeling discouraged You bring me words That make me feel encouraged You bring compassion And kindness too I feel much better When I'm holding on to you Oh, how I love you you satisfy my needs in every way Oh, how I want you To walk beside me day by day Yeah me day by day oh how I love you you satisfy my needs in every way oh how I want you to walk beside me day by day Has anybody got a Sharpie in the house? How do you have a Sharpie? Anybody got a Sharpie they can bring up here on stage right now? I want a Sharpie. Anybody a Sharpie? Bring me a Sharpie. Bring me a Sharpie. I'm going to sign them. Phil's going to sign them right here. Right. Right, right here. here on our own stage. <laughs> right here now. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Okay. Let's put it down here somewhere. Okay. There you go. You can sign that one. Oh, 
Okay. Sign yours, Steve. Sign this one. I'll hold that. You sign both of them. Okay. Okay. Have fun. Amen. True. You do everything you can to preach the gospel. There you go, buddy. Yeah. Walk through that. All right. Musical guitars. <laughs> Yay. Isaac Spelman, keep us taking pictures. Sure, it's great to see some friends here. Ah, so good to see so many of you again. Done with these. Okay. Here's some other guitars. Unplugged. Thank you, Jess, again for coming out for Skinny and Mission. Here's Jeff. Here you go, Lee. Do you want to come and do a Skype real time? Sure, why not? Okay. Do you mind if we just make up our own song list right now? Who Sharpie is this? Anybody want it back? There you go, right? Coming to you. Okay, here's one that no, we that didn't short. rehearse, right? We didn't rehearse. That was kind of a. Uh, Bucker field goal after point. <laughs> Fell short, went left. I don't know what happened there, but hey, come on. <coughs> He's good, man. What's happening? It's like crazy. You can make a 64 yard and he misses an extra point. So. I remember a guy named Lynn Elliott. I was a chaplain and did chapel. Well, I did chapel service for the Chiefs for 20 years uh, from 79 to 99. And I remember a guy named Lynn Elliott who missed three field goals against the oh. Indianapolis Colts on a very cold night like tonight. And uh, he was ridden out of town on a rail, exactly. <laughs> Poor guy. Really great guy, too. Tough being in sports sometimes. Making millions of dollars and then having to move on to another million dollar team is tough. No, it isn't. So this song that Phil just recommended, we haven't done for a long time, but we're going to go for it. We recorded it in... Uh 1974. 74. Yeah. With no, no, no. Actually, that was 75. That was no, good to be you're home. right. You're right. That's good to be home. Yeah, 74. Coming to his presence. Yeah. In fact, I remember Bernadette was there. We were in the hotel room. We had a Bible study, and I was playing that lick for during our devotion, and we kind of rehearsed it. And we went into the studio. Jim Ford was engineering, producer's workshop, and our sound check was this song. And believe it or not, we kept jamming and jamming until Johnny dropped a drumstick. Remember that? <laughs> he dropped a drumstick, and that was like the end. We kept going, but the tape ran out, and so when we mixed it down, we stopped at the seven-minute mark where it was because John had dropped the stick. But if you listen real closely to the headphones, you can hear his last do 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 and then, and then go, okay, over. So, you can run this, Yeah, I'm going to stand up. Thank you. Thank you for coming out the Lawrence Welk Show tonight. It's really great. We it's a very nice uh, concert. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have just a little more guitar in my mouth, I'd really be a little more comfortable. I can hear it bounce off the back wall of it. Thank you so much. These guys are doing this on the fly. We're doing this all on the fly. We literally rehearsed it two Sorry. hours ago, and now we're playing it. It's OK. Harpo Marks on guitar. Here's good news to all of you who played with sin And to all of you who find it hard to enter in Jesus died with his arms stretched out on a tree And they're still stretching out because they're reaching for you and me Won't you come into his presence his blood shed for you is the evidence that he wants us to come and have fellowship and be free. So now that we can come boldly before his throne, by a new and living way, which he did all alone. 
Let us draw near with assurance that is done. With our house sprinkled clean and with our bodies cleansed by the sun. Won't you come into his presence? His bloodshed for you is the evidence that he wants us to come and have fellowship and be free. That's the original key, by the way. Those are freaking high notes. They are. I got up there. I don't know how I did it, but I got there. I don't, I don't know how I got up there. I got, <laughs> I got three quarters of the way up. She did. It was yeah. great. That's, that's been one of the challenging things about playing these songs is that, you know, usually you get to be 71 years old, you kind of take it down a half step, maybe a step, even three steps like Joni Mitchell. But uh, to be playing these songs in the same key as 22 years ago, man, what a joy. It makes you feel so alive. There's a, there's a frequency in those original keys that it just brings back your youth. I, I don't want to beat a horse, you know, so to speak, but, man, there's nothing like first love for Jesus. Nothing like it. You have the same joy. You feel it over and over and over again. And when he just keeps renewing you and renewing you and renewing you, it's amazing what God does. Well, he does it. Well, you know what? Okay. Thanks again, Neil. I'm going to have to talk for a minute because I forgot my capo. This next song comes from a, 
once again, a, a message that I literally was traveling with Derek Prince, and he spoke a uh, sermon on John chapter 15 about abiding in Christ. And he always left it open for me when he would uh, speak on something. I would sit in the back and, and see, observe what was going on, and sometimes the Holy Spirit would just come on me, and I would literally just go up there at the end of the service and just play a song. And this is one of those songs that just fell out of the sky again. And uh, it's a song that I've always loved playing. And uh, after I wrote it, it was just about the time that we were getting ready to do another record. Uh, good to be home. I'm not sure. What a servant. Oh, no, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Neil. Of a cut key, but Paul, you gotta let me know what key you're in. We're gonna do an E tonight. Originally, it's in G, but I love cheating on the guitar from time to time because when I met Phil in 1973, he was playing with Love Song. We had been corresponding, but you know, back then you have email or FaceTime and that kind of stuff, and. He was playing in Lawrence, Kansas. I was hoping up for a love song that night. And, and uh, oh, thanks, man. Is it important to be in tune? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. <laughs> As I mentioned, he and Bernadette just got married in July before that. Hey, you're coming up on your 50th next year. Woo! Bern, where are you? Where's Bernadette? There she is. Bernadette, come on, stand up for a second. I want to, I got an embarrassed. Come on, stand up. Because these are your friends. Most of these people here know you. It's the Bernadette Keggy. We always have fun. And today we got off in Columbia to go to Best Buy to get a piece of gear to try to hook this, get this internet thing going and get the live recording going, sync it up with Isaac's camera. And we got off the road and you're your following saying, turn left, turn left, turn right, turn left, turn right. It's like, okay, whatever, come on. Just get us there. All of a sudden, he goes, and turn left at Bernadette Place, and you'll be at your place. Yeah. I thought, Bernadette, stop, John. Get out. I had Bernadette jump out. She did the whole, under the <laughs> sign, ch -ch 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 -ch, photo op. <laughs> that was a blast. So uh, anyway, Bernadette and Phil Kagey. I'm going to stop for just a second while Phil's kind of over there filling around. There are friends, and then there's friends, and then there's friends. And um, we've been through the ups and downs of everything. And literally, our friendship has never been even dented. It's been a beautiful, beautiful 49-year friendship with you. And um, I think back of the time. Bernadette is an amazing woman. And I'm going to push us on them because uh, I really believe they should tell their story again. Isaac should film it because uh, they have five children in heaven. And he went through a lot. Some of you, many of you out there are familiar with their, with their story. It was in triplets and two single pregnancies, and they came here to Kansas City, and through the grace of God and Dr. King and, and uh, Katie Med, they got pregnant, and it stuck this time, and we got beautiful Alicia in the world. And uh, he went on and had Olivia and good old Ian. Yeah. And uh, what, a, what a triumph over such heartache. It I mean, was. losing five children. Talk about it a little yeah, bit. And, and we've got three grandsons now, too. <laughs> That's just truly a wonderful blessing. Yeah, we're just, that's, uh, that's our gig now for the most part. That's what we love doing. Uh. Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Yeah, we don't like leaving home too much anymore. <laughs> but you understand, many of you understand that. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, God is faithful, and uh, um, we're just grateful for the mercy we've been shown and, uh, and true friends. And uh, I have to say, <clears throat> when we moved from upstate New York to Kansas City, Leewood, back in 1979, it, it was like we landed in a piece of paradise because of the love that we experienced here. And then that's where our family began to grow and blossom. And, and the friends that we've made that we still have to this day, thank you so much, all of you. You know who you are. And uh, just wonderful memories. And Paul took us in when we didn't have a home. So we found a place to live. And so beautiful. Yeah, so thank you for everything. And thank you for all your friendship. Thank you. Thank you. Phil, Lord bless you. Bernadette, a real woman of God. Bernadette's a real woman of God, amazing cook too and all that. And 
Uh, it's great to, to know Phil and Burnett all these years. So anyway, back in the day, we wrote this song on a different key, but I love playing it in this, in this split capo E, and it just uh, resonates with my heart right now. So anyway, this is a song called Abide. The more I go on with the Lord, I find that I cannot afford to stay away from His side. It's in the vine alibi. His words are truth and life to me. They cleanse and sanctify me. I know his power can't be denied. It's in the vine alibi. A child of God, I know I am. I've been washing the precious blood of the Lamb. Here you go. But I haven't touched the whole. In his sight, but in the vine, I'll abide. So before I scoot off the stage and Phil gives you 30 to 35 minutes of his delicious music, uh, I talked about paying it forward tonight. And uh, 16 years ago, I met Heidi at a festival in uh, Ohio. And uh, I was speaking actually in the afternoon on how to survive the storms of life, Acts 27. And uh, after I left that festival, I sang in Granville, Ohio. And Heidi and Jonathan, her son, came down. He's eight years old. And uh, is Jonathan coming out? Where is he? Are you Jonathan? There he is. Come on up. So this is Jonathan Alabac. How are you, son? <laughs> I met him. He was eight years old. He was uh, looked like old Frodo with his curly hair and blue eyes, running this uh, go kart around my friend's five acre tract of land until two o'clock in the morning. And I fell in love with him. And he's not any less than uh, my own children, which I am so honored that they're here tonight. And I love my children so much. And I kind of got a second chance to try to do something meaningful in a young, man, young man's life. And 
So I started investing in him uh, musically. And when he was 14, I gave him a Martin guitar, kind of like the ones we played tonight. It's a good starter one, played in tune, good going. And he just kind of kept on playing. And when he turned 20, I gave him an upscale quite a bit more Martin. And uh, where is that guitar? I better go get it. You're going to have a hard time playing some without a guitar. <laughs> But uh, Jonathan, we, he called me up four years ago last month, and he said, hey, I want to come to Kansas City and make a record. I said, awesome. And he's going to come for six weeks, come to Dole just before Christmas, and, and uh, we'll make a record. And, and then you go back to Ohio and have a great Christmas and play your mom your new CD of all the songs we're going to write together. And four years later, uh, he has been my right-hand man. When I went through all that stuff physically, uh, the things that happened to me, uh, Jonathan was living with me, and uh, literally the Lord used him to save my life uh, in Heidi. That one night, especially, I'd gotten out of the hospital and went to my daughter Joanna's house for Thanksgiving dinner, and I was as red as a beet. Something wasn't right. It looked like Jonathan's shirt, um, and I went back to my house, and I just wanted to go to bed and sleep, and Heidi called. She would landed back in Ohio. After dinner, she said, how are you feeling? I said, I'm just so tired. I just want to go to bed. She said, no, something's wrong. She could tell my voice something's wrong. And I rebuked her, basically, and just said, no, just leave me alone, I'm going to sleep. And she called Jonathan's phone and said, take him to the hospital now. And uh, literally pulled in the hospital, and just as I was entering the parking lot, I started having heart failure, and they gave me the nitroglycerin in the parking lot, and the Lord used this young man to save me. Over the next three and a half months, he must have taken me to the hospital about eight or nine times. I don't know, I lost track, but... It's it nine times, yeah. Nine times. He, <laughs> he counted them. <laughs> He was my right-hand man. He would come in, and I'd say, could you just rub my feet for like 20 minutes? Because there are touch points in your body that, that, you know, push adrenal glands or cause different effects in your body. And I was, I was depleted. I mean, when you go in a flax, it's back-to-back, and you're unplugged. You're a computer, basically. You're, you're, you're nothing. I couldn't think straight. I couldn't walk. I couldn't feed myself. And uh, I'm so grateful to you, Jonathan, for being used of the Lord. And... Uh, And for Heidi, Heidi, the same thing. She has saved my life so many times. But um, so I want you, yeah, he made a beautiful record. Just came out a couple weeks ago. You can get it online or you can get it here tonight. It's amazing. See, I had the joy of producing it. But tell them about this song, that, how we wrote it. Uh, so this is a song that Paul and I wrote together. Uh, we were in the studio one day. I was uh, suffering from a bad case of writer's block. <laughs> so I asked Paul, I, Paul, said, uh, you know, what's your favorite Bible verse? And so at the time I said, Mark 8, verse 34. And uh, for any man who come after me, let him deny himself, uh, take up his cross, and follow after me. And so we uh, wrote this song together. About, about two, two hours. hours and, yeah, uh, it was great. You know, but the Holy Spirit drops on you like that. Just The chemistry just started happening. It's like going to a kitchen making dinner. It's such a delight. And to see his favorite verse just come to a song. He wrote his beautiful lyrics, I mean, music, and he helped with the lyrics and showed him how you write a song with lyrics. And this is what came out. So we're all good. desires to be free 
Let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow after me. Save your life, you'll lose it in the end. Lose your life, you'll find your life in him. For what is the reward to gain the whole wide world and forfeit your soul to be the king? Cause when the curtain falls, you hear the Father call, and all your gold will fall into the sea. All your gold will fall into the sea. If any man desires to be free, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow after me. Save your life, you'll lose it in the end. Lose your life, you'll find your life in him. If any man desires to be free, let him deny himself, take up his cross, Follow after me Save your life You'll lose it in the end Lose your life You'll find your life in him Lose your life You'll find your life in him Amen Woo! Beautiful Jonathan Before I turn Phil loose, I want to tell two quick stories. And that is, how did I get here? 1970, after that cabin, I got saved and eventually moved down to Denver in 71 with Bill Spear. On our way back from Alaska, we met Mike Burhart and the Helly Joy Band. Stay right here, Philly. Get yourself ready. And we opened this little coffee house called The Narrow Gate. I used to play my songs every weekend. Hippies would come in, and I'd sing these newly penned songs. And people were getting saved and giving their lives to Jesus. It was amazing. And um, an older man, much, much older man, used to come in every weekend. Dick Brown was, Maria, was he like 43? Are you here? Maria, I know you're here. Was he 43? Something like that. He had a little bit of gray hair, and, you know, he was getting older. He was 43. And I think it was just a really old man. Keeps coming to our coffee house every weekend, you know. And it was quite comical. And then he eventually came to me and said, you know what? You've got to record these songs. So look at all these kids coming. Every weekend, these kids are going to get saved. And they leave. You can just send them with records so they can listen to these songs over and over. Because these songs have power. And I was like, yeah, but that costs money. When I was an unlicensed pharmaceutical representative, that was no problem. <laughs> Did you get that? Living in Lawrence in 1969, I was a small-time, you know, entrepreneur, and uh, I was a, my own client. I, I used to sample my own goods all the time, and I also profited slightly. And uh, that business came to a close, and uh, when I got involved in Chancellor Meditation and got my $30 mantra and got the demon, got a new demon, and uh, eventually the Lord delivered me of that and got saved. This guy, Dick Brown, every weekend came in. It was just like a termite just chewing away at me. You've got to make a record. I said, Dick, see that Pepsi machine? Bill Spear and I are splitting. It's 10 cents a bottle, but Pepsi gets 7%. Go figure that out. We get 3 cents. I get a penny and a half, and Bill gets a penny. That's what we're living on. I'm living making $40 a month. You know, I can't make a $3,000 record. But you know what? He came and gave me a $3,000 check. He said, I've already booked the time at Benson Sound. You're making your first record. Went down there with Mike Burhart and R.G. Cunha and Steve Gleck and, and uh, Bill Spear and how oh, we just made that volume one record. And then it took off like a wildfire. And I was eating at my grandparents' house. I don't know if we have pictures of, there's Dick Brown. Remember, and Phil, you knew him, you're good as a friend. Oh, there was my dad and I in 1970. That's, my dad actually had the picture blown up and had it on his law office, like huge. Now, that's not what you really want to show your clients. That's my son, I'm so proud of him. He's an ex-drug addict and he's really a wild man. But that's, that was my dad, and there's my grandparents. Here's what happened with my grandparents. My grandparents were, I didn't tell this part of the story, my testimony, she, my grandparents sent me a box of books about Jesus to my P.O. box in Bertha Falls, Colorado, Empire, Colorado. And they prayed for me, they incredibly prayed for me. And um, 
when she saw the first record, Volume 1, take off like wildfire, which was in March of 72, like in April or May, I'm sitting there having potato pancakes in their nook over on Trucewood Road between Trucewood and Basile and 49th Street. And uh, she says, do you have more songs? I said, yeah, I've got about 40. She says, good. You need to make that record now. Otherwise, you'll be a one-hit wonder. <laughs> That's pretty cool for an 80-year-old lady to call you a one-hit wonder. <laughs> she said, you need another record so this one can keep going. So she goes and makes another batch of pancakes and come back and hands me a $3,000 check and says, go make that record. So in August of 72, uh, she, they financed that, and that's why it's a blessing to see Jonathan, and I want to encourage each one of you tonight. You've got resources. You're older. Find a young man like that. Find a young musician. Find a young whatever. Invest yourself in the gospel, and with that, I turn it over to my lifelong friend, Mr. Phil Kage. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Paul. I'd like to do a little instrumental piece here for you, just to kind of break the ice underneath me. <laughs> and, uh, this is called Shades of Green. Uh, and, uh,
Thank you. Thanks so very much. I ended up uh, putting the groove in a little faster than I should. I'm saying, where's the fire? This song goes back to the 70s as well. This song written by uh, Keith Green, Randy Stonehill, and uh, Todd Fishkin. It's, a, it's uh, always been a special song to me. Your love broke through. So much, folks. Um, I'm just grateful I could sing anything. Last week I had laryngitis, and uh, I uh, 
whispered through uh, a number of days. So thank you, Lord, that I can sing something tonight. Wow, that's a blessing. So I'm hoping by January I'm right there, back where I was last January. Uh, this song here, I'm going to do just a bit of this here because it's kind of a, a song I wrote uh, with my friend Tommy Coombs and also, I believe, Will McFarlane, and uh, it's called Not Be Moved, something like this.
Thanks. Wrote this song, uh, at least the first couple verses, waiting in a at the KU Med Center two weeks before our daughter Alicia was born, March 1980. It's called Little Ones. Thank you now, yet he will never 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. 
for sleep and joy by those whose eyes find rest in you. Adoring the glory of your presence within view. You cover me, clothed with your own righteousness I stand. You made me part of your salvation army. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Forty years ago, I didn't think I'd be doing that. <clears throat> anyway, here's a bit of a song, my last song here, before we resume with a, a full night of good music. And if you don't mind, one more little here. One. I'd like to dedicate this song to the newbies, Dan and Tommy, and uh, all the dear friends, Terry and Don Lineman. Thank you, guys. You know, uh, Dan encouraged me to write this song. Um, I'm my booking agent in those days. And, and uh, I've got some fairly good teeth today because of Dr. Terry Lineman, so thank you, Terry. <laughs> yeah, so. I got three bridges that haven't fallen down, and I'm really grateful for that, and he's the most honest dentist I think I've ever met, good brother, so this is uh, Let Everything Else Go, it was really uh, encouraged by Dan Newby, and it was inspired by a good friend, Bruce Coleman.
Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. What a night, huh? We're not done yet. Stand, uh, you old people, stand up. Just don't leave, though, please. Just stand, because you're going to miss the last couple songs if you leave. Uh, so stand up, stretch your leg for a second. We're going to play What a Day. Okay, is a great song. And then hand the plow. And I got a surprise for you. So stretch your legs if you want. Stand there in your whole song. We don't care. But uh, get the band back on stage. And let me introduce a new player in the scene. A guy that's my right-hand man for years, from hand to plow on. I literally bought a, a, a piece of equipment off of Kansas City Star One Ad, went down to a bar on Shawnee, walked in, paid the guy 45 bucks, and sat down to be kind and watch him play a song. He was playing, I Shot the Sheriff, playing guitar and singing lead guitar, and he totally burnt my hair off. I thought, wow, I play with Phil Kagey all the time. You don't think about ditching Phil Kagey for anybody. But I was shifting gears to piano at the time, and, and um, I met Kurt Bartlett right here. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Kurt was my right-hand guy for years and years, and then he toured with Phil and I. We had a band called Cross Section. Mm -hmm. He played the second chapter of Axe for a long time. He's yeah. a journeyman, and more than that, he's a faithful, faithful friend. So we're going to yeah. back up Phil on what a day for this part. Yeah. And back here on vocals, we got my favorite singer. Everybody can talk about Bonnie Raitt all they want. I've got all Bonnie Raitt records. But uh, there are singers, and there are singers like the next level. And that's hard to say about Bonnie, but this is Charity Montefiore. Next time, <clears throat> need to do a whole set with her singing. So we want to make sure that you look to the sky because the ceiling may start coming down when she starts singing. So. The next song especially, not so much this song, but the next song. So uh, take it away, Philly. One. Oh, let me sing. Thanks, Brandon. Hope you sing along. When I get home.
Lester, get up here. Let's just tell. Where's Jimmy and Lester? All right, please be patient. I know it's getting late for you old folks. We got two more surprises real quick. My Lester Stell and Jimmy Bradshaw get up here. We're gonna play a song called Hand the Plow from back in the day. So if you're ready for that. You can stay standing if you want, better for your blood. Dance a little bit, find a partner, you know. Jimmy coming up. Oh, you're coming up for the last song. My fault, my bad. Here we go, hand the plow. Take it away, Jay.
Amen. Last song coming up, Jimmy Bratcher, Lester Stell. Get up here and join us. We're going to have a little wall of sound. We're going to sing a little Bob Dylan song for you here. You can stand your feet, okay? This is called Service Somebody. And I'm going to put change hats on, take this hat off, put my Bob Dylan hat on. Good to see you here tonight. I pray you can get something out of this. Really. You know, you praise the Lord. Yeah. What a blast. We're having a good time. Take it away. Jimmy Bratcher on guitar. And that great drummer back there, Brandon Stell, this is his dad. And his son, Le Lester Stell Jr., is a monster drummer as well. And the rest of their family, they drank something in their water that something happened in that household because everybody in that house has got stinking talent. No, you give us you give us the lick. That's it. That's the one. Gonna play percussion to my grandkids. Follow me, boys. You might be the head of some a TV network. You might be rich or poor. You might be blind or lame. Maybe living in another country under another name. But you're gonna have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you're gonna serve somebody. We got lost here. It's okay. Serve somebody. You might be the devil. Might be the Lord, but you're gonna have to serve somebody now.
Fletcher. Lester still, take it away. Call me Timmy. You might call me Pablo or Pinky. You might call me Jimmy. Or you can call me RJ. You can call me Ray. Call me anything you know, you know, you know what I say. But you're gonna just serve somebody. You're gonna just serve somebody. It might be the devil, it might be the Lord, but you just serve somebody. Serve Jumping beans back there, Lydia and Ridley, and my son Joel playing the percussion. They're jumping around, getting rid of all that adrenaline. Just want to thank you so much for coming out tonight. It's been an amazing night. Just totally improv and ad lib. And uh, without you, this wouldn't even be happening. So thankful. And just know that we're going to serve somebody. It's going to be Jesus or some idol that you fashioned for yourself. Tonight we choose you. We choose you. Can you say I choose Jesus? I choose Jesus. Come on. I choose Jesus. That's who I want to serve. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. One last time then. They might call you an unbeliever. They might call you by shame. They may tell you with fear. They call you somebody name. Jesus is your Savior. He forgive you of your sin. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse you. Cleanse you from within. Yeah. Somebody. Gonna have to serve somebody.
Remember this song as you go out the door? This is the chorus of song that I wrote on my first album. Might stick in a lot of your heads. We'll soon be going home. We'll soon be going home. Sing it with me. I know you know it. We'll soon be going home. our eternal home will soon be going 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 home Drive safely driving home. You'll see me going to your own home in bed, but thank you so much for coming. Also, where's Mike Burrard? I want to get everybody up here. Just one round of applause for all these great musicians. Where's Mike? Mike, get up here. Come on. Mike Burrard, where are you? Everybody, come up here. Come up, come, come up, come up. Mike, Mike. Everybody, here. Where Just a second, Jonathan, come on. Get us all out here. We got to have a photo op. This is very important. Charity Mascari, Brandon Estelle, Jay Pfeiffer, UJ Payson, um, Jonathan Alabac, Lester Estelle, Mike Burhart, Jimmy Bratcher, Kurt Bartlett, my man Kurt, uh, K Kayla, 22 freaking years old, and Neil for help with all the equipment. And my last but not thank you is to Mr. Phil Kagey. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, for you. You guys have a great night. God bless you. Drive home safely. Amen. <laughs>